here. Good morning, good afternoon, hello everybody, wherever you may be. Thank you all for attending. My name is Steve, I'll be your host today. If you're here for the Flow webinar on cutting complex materials with WaterJet, you are in the right place. Um, this is the second in our series of live Flow WaterJet online trade shows. We're thrilled to have you with us. Um, a few housekeeping items that we would like to get ready uh, uh, that we'd like to share with you while we get ready to start. First of all, we are indeed live. Uh, we expect to be here for about an hour. Um, most of that time will be filled with our presentation, but we'll be saving uh, a bit at the end for Q and A. Um, we will be recording the entire session, so if you have to leave or would like to replay or share this with your colleagues with the recording later, we will be sending a link to you afterwards. And also, this, like all of our other online trade shows, will be available on our website for future download at any time uh, at no cost. Secondly, um, there are quite a few people in our audience today. Thank you for coming. Um, so although we have muted your microphones and our cameras so we cannot see or hear you, we are taking questions throughout the webinar via the chat box, which is on the right-hand side of your screen. So if you have a question, please type it in, and we will do our best to collect them all and answer them at the end of our presentation. And finally, by way of follow-up, uh, if you would like to continue a dialogue with someone from our team uh, immediately, if you have a question or an inquiry about a system or troubleshooting, or if you need a quote, please enter your name and number or your email contact info into that same chat box as well. And we'll be collecting those and we will put someone in touch with you in the next 24 hours, if not sooner, if we possibly can. So um, finally, just one note, our videos are running at a fully optimized, um, on a fully optimized platform that has infinite capacity. So unfortunately, if you're having any issues with buffering or with delays, um, it's probably a limitation of your local service. And although there's nothing we can do about that, you will be able to see the videos in full form um, when you download them from the link. And any other glitches, if you are not already in, um, in uh, uh, Sorry, if you're not already on um, the Google platform, you are probably better there than you are in Internet Explorer. So uh, with that said, we are ready to go. I would like to introduce you, if I could, to our presenters for the day. Um, we are happy to have with us um, two, of our, two of our favorite people. Person number one is our special guest, Jason Marburger. For those of you who don't know him, we're very happy to have him here. Jason is the founder, owner, operator at Fireball Tool. You may know him from his presence on social media or from his expertise in the water jet business, as well as uh, a variety of other areas in machining and tooling, welding, and other aspects of the fabrication business. He's been a friend and a customer and a partner of Flows for a long time and quite possibly the best subject matter expert we could have on hand today to talk about how to cut complex material. Also presenting today is Adam Mooningham. Adam's our head of sales for the Northwest region of the US and Canada for Flow. Uh, don't let his youthful good looks deceive you. He has been with Flow for a very long time and literally the water jet business is in his DNA. Uh, there are a few people in his position who know the water jet business as completely and thoroughly as, as he does. Um, so a great, a great team to talk about cutting complex materials. Gentlemen, if I've left anything out, feel free to chime in. Um, and at the end of the presentation, I'll be reading as many of the questions that we've collected as possible to Jason and Adam, who will be tag teaming on the answers. And if you have to duck out before that, uh, no worries. We'll be sending out the answers to those questions to you afterwards as well. So. With that, I will hit my mute button and let the team take over. Thank you again for tuning in. Adam, Jason, thank you as well, and off we go. 
Well, we appreciate it. Definitely a nice welcome. And it's it's good to be with all of you today here and, and talk about a little bit of what we're doing here at Flow and, and kind of just talk about some of the, the neat stuff of what's going on in the water jet industry and the water jet world. But I think kind of a lot of it boils down to just that of why consider a water jet? And, and the short answer as I look at it is if you can dream it, you, you, can, cost, you can cut it and process it with a water jet. Yep. And I know Jason will get into a lot of the details of what they're doing at his shop here today. But I think the, the beauty of the technology is just that, the, the, the versatility. You're able to cut uh, virtually any material at nearly any shape at, frankly, nearly any thickness to the parts. So on the screen here, it's a, a good kind of representation of what that looks like for water jets, where you're able to cut everywhere from ballistic material, Kevlar, to doing stack materials, doing even in the food industry, to even doing kind of even your softer materials like gaskets or foam or some of your proprietary uh, harder materials, exotic stuff like some of the uh, kind of hardened uh, tool steel. Those are great applications for water jets. But this just gives you a good spectrum of what that looks like in the water jet world. Um, a little bit at first before we kind of jump into that, kind of tag, uh, I guess, add on to what Steve was there, a little bit of profile. But to introduce to everybody out here, uh, Jason with, with Fireball Tool, been a customer of Flows for a couple of years now. He's located right here in the Northwest uh, in Spokane, Washington. Got a great business of, of building some of the highest end tooling for the welding industry. Obviously got a big presence online and kind of all the stuff he's doing through his YouTube channel and, and social media, but a great partner with Flow. Great to have him in the Flow family, but I'll let you, Jason, kind of maybe elaborate a little more what, what you guys are doing over there. Well, thank you, Adam, for the kind introduction. Uh, but a little bit about myself. I've been a welder, fabricator, millwright uh, for the last 20 years. And uh, up until just recently, I uh, started designing tools for my favorite welding and fabrication trade and trying to solve problems um, that I've found throughout my career. Uh, but uh, as an instrument to help me do that, I purchased a water jet and I absolutely love the versatility that the machine gives me and allows my imagination just to go crazy. So, uh, but it's pretty fun and I'd love to share with you guys today some of the things that I've learned on cutting some complex materials. Yeah, absolutely, and I think we've got just that a video here of something you guys were recently kind of doing. I, I don't, for you guys, you probably elaborate to that a little bit further, but uh, yeah. Doing some some composite cutting, and that. Yeah, this is a kind of a side project that my brother and I were working on, and it's creating mm -hmm. a custom racing drone body or a camera-mounted um, drone body for high-speed uh, following or car chases. And my first time cutting carbon fiber with it, and it didn't go as expected, <laughs> uh, which has led me down this path of how do I cut some of these harder materials and uh, have some success with that. So uh, we'll get we'll get more into that a little bit later though. Yeah, I think that's a good part to kind of jump off of, of just that, even though a water jet can cut a lot of these materials, mm -hmm. there are potentially kind of modifications and adjustments you wanna make sure your machine's properly set up to be able to, to cut them at, and get the best results. And I think this this slide kind of highlights just that. Of even though WaterJet can cut kind of almost any material on the planet, there are certain applications that make it actually the preferred method for for cutting. Um, and just want to make sure that, frankly, the harder it is to machine, generally, the better it is to do on WaterJet. Uh, frankly, one of those good applications for water jets would be brittle materials or or laminated materials, just because those typically are more prone for what's called micro cracking or delamination of, of materials. So you start to see a little bit of that edge getting frayed on being able to cut. So kind of a little bit of a list here of some of those different applications that are specialized for water jets would be like a fiberglass, get into composite material. Um, even doing some of the stone and granites um, are great applications for utilizing a water jet for. And then specifically, obviously the glass is a great industry for water jets. We've got a lot of customers in the, the shower door industry um, that utilize water jets day in and day out. But you do need to make sure your machine is properly paired with the right technology to get you the best results you can achieve. Um, here's a, a good kind of side picture, I thought, just to give you a, a visual or give the audience a visual of what potentially could occur, not only with the water jet, but frankly in the, the standard machining process with these kind of layered materials. So as you can see there, with that fragile material, you, you typically you'll get that, that crater or crack that it would 
potentially occur during that, that piercing process. That's where you have the, the moment where there's the potential uh, opportunity for damage to be caused to your material it would be during that initial burst of high pressure water or your initial contact with that material. There was a technology developed by Flow a handful of years ago to specifically address that, um, which is called the Ultra Pierce, that we're going to make sure to kind of cover with the audience, get into some of the, the real details of it, how it works, how it functions in the software. But uh, most importantly, before we do that, I'll let you, Jason, I know you filmed this here. This was a, a video showing what could occur, the, I guess, the, the worst case scenario with the water jet. Yeah, this was a just a standard pierce into one inch uh, G10 uh, composite, so pretty thick. And uh, normally you'd pierce it, um, in my machine, 87,000 PSI. And as soon as that water touches that material, it causes a delamination and causing an air pocket in that vicinity and rendering that material useless in that area or the part that you're working on gets scrapped because of it. So you can see how that happened. It was just a big pop and destroyed it. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of uh, the gear that was being cut out of that material and one that it was used to ultra pierce. And you can definitely tell the difference between the two uh, in those delaminated layers. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, obviously visually able to see that in the discoloration. I think we've even got some kind of zoomed in photos here on a kind of microscopic level, show you what that looks like. But yeah, just that what you're seeing in that discoloration is the the separation of those individual layers, according, especially as a thick one inch piece of material here that you got to cut out. Mm -hmm. On the inside geometry, obviously that's occurring as well here and, and even more prevalent on that part too. Yep. And then this way is it this is uh the the kind of stacked of the two different parts good and bad is that what you kind of put together here yep that's uh you can see how much it elevated for those bubbles from the delamination on the bottom it's pretty crazy. yeah kind of looks like carried all the way through the part there mm -hmm. and, and i think that's fundamentally our goal at flow within with for all of our customers and the way we design our machines is we want to make sure we're we're provide to achieve the highest quality cut we want to make sure your machine is set up properly with the right technology and the right support through there. Um, frankly, though, before kind of the innovation of, of Ultra Pierce and what that added to the, the water engine industry, there were traditional ways of addressing this exact issue for, for cutting composites and laminated materials that a lot of our customers over the years would, would try to uh, essentially work around for that. Um, and I'll kind of show some of those, uh, what, what those solutions are. Uh, you did have the ability within all of our machines and our setup is you can adjust that and fine tune all of the setup procedures for the machine. So you can adjust when the, the head will open up, the on-off valves, the, the dwell times, the piercing, the pressure. The challenge with those this historically has always been everything kind of has to be done perfect to ensure you get that perfect result. Where if something's just not exactly right, you might have a, the opportunity to damage that material where we wanna make sure we're always avoiding that as, as much as possible. Uh, the other alternative a lot of customers would do is you adjust that pump pressure. So within our entire spectrum of pumps, you do have the ability to adjust and kind of fine tune that pressure of the pump. But you may find that certain materials, you may want to do a low pressure pierce on it, drop that pressure way down to minimize that effect of, of delamination. The challenge with this, though, is you might be putting additional wear and tear to your pumps or the high pressure seals where Frankly, that could cause additional fatigue that we're, we want to make sure we're maximizing your productivity as well as the, the, the cutting operations to the pump. The third solution, and quite frankly, the preferred method for customers that don't have ultra pierce was always historically just to avoid the piercing in the first place. So you essentially start off your material, put a really long lead in, lead out on your parameters for your parts, and then do your cutting. The, the kind of inherent challenges with this method is you're now kind of you're certainly adding on additional cutting length to your part, which adds on to your cycle time as well as additional kind of consumables being used that might not have to use otherwise. But also this would allow for limitation on some of the parameters or profiles that can be cut. So you may not be able to do inside geometry of a part. You might have to, you might have limitation factor to it. But with that flow kind of in our, our kind of DNA here at Flow, we're always trying to strive and improve the the productivity of our water jets, but also helping our customers, partnering with them to make sure they're as profitable and productive as possible. 
So we do have a full advanced applications team here at Flow that's always trying to come up with new tools and new features to add onto our machines. Namely being one of those is UltraPairs. This is a patented process developed, Flow developed. Uh, this allows for the ability to do this, this piercing of hard kind of laminated or composite material. Real simple feature to, to any of our machines that can be added on. But the focus of this, like all of our products, is to help improve the processing for complex materials and, and parts, which ultimately with the overall goal of helping you to speed up your overall production using a water jet. Uh, with, and then as you're able to cut faster and be more accurate and more efficient with your cut, you're helping to optimize your material. So you're not having to waste additional material that otherwise might be discarded or having to be cut. With the ultimate focus at Flow is helping our customers make the most money and save the most money in using their water jets on a day-to-day -day basis. So a little bit about kind of how the technology works and explains kind of, maybe I'll kind of step back here a little bit, but show kind of what a normal cutting process is. So as you kind of see on the screen here, this is a kind of a cutaway of what our, our latest cutting heads looks like. How this operates is your high pressure water will be traveling down from the top of the cutting head. That'll be pressurized up to Mach 3 or Mach 4 uh, speeds, traveling through what's called a diamond or a ruby orifice. That ruby, that orifice translates that pressure into velocity. As that orifice is, the water travels to that orifice, it will then be pulled into the mixing chamber using that garnet sand to ultimately go into the mixing tube, which really kind of uh, provides that cutting capacity of the machine. The, the challenge with water jets is to get that abrasive tight into your machine, you need to create that vacuum effect. So there is that high pressure water will be the inertial, initial burst will just simply be high pressure water. The challenge is that for applications like we're talking about today here is if you were to hit that with just high pressure water, it loses all of its cutting capacity. And so you're potentially not able to kind of pierce or get all the way through the part without damaging that. As we get into kind of what ultra pierce is, this creates that false vacuum. With this no clog design, it allows the abrasive to be pulled right into that mixing chamber just a split second before that water turns on. That allows for automatic entrainment of those, particul those particles of the abrasive into your cutting stream. And uh, Jason, I think you might be able to kind of, I know you recently installed Ultraperis on your machine, but kind of here's a cutaway to show what that looks like. Might be able to kind of provide a little color to that. Yeah, it's what I call this is kind of the Venturi nozzle and it's, I don't know, the meat and potatoes on how this whole thing works. And it's a cool attachment that uh, literally thumb screws to that second nozzle port on the cutting head. So you can install it really quickly or in between cuts or parts. And uh, it just uh, thumb screws on there and it gets hooked with compressed air um, from your air compressor. And that compressed air then uh, allows you to have that venturi effect always pulling garnet through uh, that cutting head at all times uh, or right before the water turns on. And then before, um, uh, so what that also allows you to do is then see that garnet is flowing because at the other end of this venturi nozzle is this tube. And uh, this dump tube, I call it, uh, puts all that excess garnet uh, back into the tank and you can hold your hand in front of it because it's almost hard to see the garnet flowing through. But that uh, verifies that you are ready for your pierce cut and that you're not going to destroy your material. So there's only just a couple components to be able to add on when you're ready to do this type of cutting. And it installs pretty fast and easily. Yeah, I, I, actually a really good point that you brought up there is the part of the design of the ultra pierce, which you see on the screen here for the audience, is a, frankly a very simple kind of item to add onto a machine, but it does allow for just that, a visual of knowing that ultra pierce is functioning. So you can kind of rest assured that you don't have to worry about, is this piercing process working out? And then you go through and cut out everything to find out, boy, we did have some delamination. This does show entrainment of that abrasive prior to that jet and that cutting process ever working. Uh, and part of that uh, kind of add on to that is you do want to make sure that you're your machine is set up according to the, the kind of recommended settings we might, our applications lab would put together. Uh, you do want to make sure that you're configured with the, the appropriate abrasive flow rate for your given application as well as your given machine. So your pump and your cutting head would kind of dictate some of those settings. You do have to, you want to make sure that your, your pressure is set appropriate as well, where you can, like I mentioned earlier, is you can raise and lower that pressure. There are certainly applications where you want to make sure to do what's called a low pressure pierce routine. There are other applications where it actually works better piercing at high pressure. 
Uh, you do also want to make sure that the, the dwell settings are set up um, for the given your given thickness of material, as well as your setup. So you can adjust those and fine tune those those items, uh, as well as the abrasive itself. So not only the abrasive flow rate, but the type of abrasive you're using. We do have the ability to adjust that. So you can go from a really coarse abrasive or to a really fine abrasive. So all the way down to about 220 mesh abrasive within there. Um, and then lastly, the one item you want to kind of make sure is, is uh, configured appropriate is the, the cutting head standoff. So that's the distance from the bottom of the cutting head to the top of your material. Uh, generally speaking, it's recommended to have that at 100 thousandths off your material. But you may, for your given application or your cutting, you may want to fine tune that, raising and lowering that slightly as well. So more importantly, let's kind of see this in action here with uh, how the Ultra Pierce works. And I, I'll let you kind of elaborate, Jason, here. Of You guys took some video, I might understand. For, uh, yeah. This is a uh, slow speed or a slow motion Pierce. And this is filmed in uh, 240 frames per second. And as soon as the water turns on, you've noticed that there is garnet uh, developing around that little umbrella, uh, basically telling you, man, there's garnet hitting that material with the water. And this pierce is in one inch thick G10, I believe. And it okay. took about 12 seconds to pierce through it. Uh, but it is interesting on piercing at about 16,000 PSI, so much lower than normal. Uh, but now it's eroding that um, that hole that I'm looking for to give me that edge start. Uh, so when I do cut the parts. Yeah, and I was going to say, you can see it in super slow-mo here, but uh, obviously it's still in that piercing process through that video there. But mm -hmm. through you'll be able to see all of that abrasive water goes directly through that material and passes through there. So pretty neat to see see that in, in action up close. Um, I certainly kind of jump into kind of a variety of different materials that frankly are good candidates for using Ultra Pierce for. Um, but there is a, the carbon fiber is one material specifically we often hear about from our applications lab and our customers on what's the best way to process that? Can a water jet cut it? And the, the simple answer is yes. Uh, it's a great, great material, great application for water jets. Um, and I think this goes back to kind of some of the drone cutting you guys were doing. Is, is yeah, that this is another uh, sample clip of cutting the drone body out. Okay. Uh, this was a uh, kind of a tricky, complex part because of, there's so many pierces. I think there's up to like 25 or 26 pierces in this small little area. And so there's a lot of opportunity to destroy this expensive piece of carbon fiber, which was about $200. So getting it right the first time is uh, kind of necessary. Don't have a lot of material to work with. Um, but yeah, as you pierce, um, it kind of does a pierce path, cutting all the pierces at once, and then coming back and cutting all the uh, outlining or the profile of the part. Uh, but yeah, this is a really small hole uh, designed to mount the motors to uh, when you pierce. So uh, I need really good edge quality and a really straight through hole to be able to bolt the motors to. Oh, it, it, was this uh, something you guys designed there or is this? Uh, this is a, a, mod a drone modification. Uh, so it's a little bit custom, yes. Okay. <laughs> kind of modified. Huh. Pretty neat, neat to see there. And I think, yeah, I was gonna say, we even have, I believe, some up close footages to show just at the surface edge finish for, for this part. And boy, you're right about those pierce points there, pretty small small features within that, that part here. Yep. And then I guess there's a picture of it to kind of show there. And then this is the, so you guys had cut another one then with without ultra pierce, is that? Yep. Obvious? That's just basic. basically in a normal cut path as if it was like aluminum and this is okay. the <laughs> this is what happens it with all those pierce points it just explodes that carbon fiber and there's really nothing you can do about it it's um, it's just what happens yeah yeah if yeah if you're not if you're piercing it with a standard setup yeah this does definitely has a tendency to do that especially with this many pierces through the part there's a kind of a good side by side comparison by the way your your guys is Photo skills are pretty impressive here. <laughs> yeah, it helps to be able to visualize the parts really well. I tried to relay yeah. that to you guys. Well, here's a, a material we often hear about, especially obviously in the, the countertop industry, but is ceramic tile, and we hear it a lot in with the granite and marble for cutting. Um, if if a water jet can achieve those cuts, if it can get through the material, but also is it reliable enough to be able to achieve? Um, 
And I guess the this simple answer is absolutely a water jet's a great tool for, for cutting ceramic tile to it. Um, here's a, I think a three eighths inch kind of just standard ceramic tile piece. Mm -hmm. And you guys were cutting, was it a shower uh, cover? Is that what you guys were cutting? It was like a little shower or basically a floor drain tile. Okay. And uh, what's interesting about this is what you guys can see is that the water jet, um, we chose to do a pierce all holes first. So it'll go through and use the ultra pierce and give us all a starting point on some internal features. And then after that, then it will go through and cut all the parts out um, after there's a hole already been made. And that is something that you can choose in the program or in the computer software to either pierce first and cut or pierce all holes. So it's pretty easy to set up. Yeah, I was going to say, actually, a really good point you brought up there is the way on the cam portion of the software, the how that operates and utilize, you do have that ability to select to either pierce all your holes first. What that would then automatically do is go around to each individual pierce point and then pierce those out, raise up to a higher pressure, and then do your profile shaping of it. Or you can simply select pierce then cut, where it allows you to be able to pierce each hole, cut out that feature, then move to the next and pierce again, repeat that over and over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's a, I guess, a couple snapshots of what this looked like. And you can see that exact edge quality where you, you avoid that kind of brittle or breaking of that material uh, where some, something like this hard ceramic tile, you'll do it. Uh, another uh, material that I often hear about from kind of local customers here in the Northwest, uh, especially with the aerospace world, is, is fiberglass. Obviously a great application for the strength and the, the material properties for as lightweight as it is. But there is traditional machining processes typically struggle with this for kind of either dust or particles or fraying of that edge that it generally gravitates towards a water jet being a good fit for. Um, and I'll let you kind of elaborate what you guys have done here, Jason. Yeah, this was a simple bracket uh, made from this one inch thick uh, fiberglass. And we used the ultra pierce to pierce uh, the internal features and external. And then I wanted to see how fast I could cut this part and see if that was going to cause some delamination. So uh, I actually cut this at almost 100% cut quality and you'll be able to see uh, what that looks like on a material such as this uh, fiberglass. Yeah, I can see it here is I guess the finished part, but yeah, a good point you bring up is as you're kind of looking at the surface edge finish of this part here, you do have that ability in the software to select each individual contour and geometry at its own individual surface finish. Uh, so you have a selection of from 1% up to 100%, whereas I, I believe this would be on the rougher end of that scale here, which you had cut out. But if there's certain geometry where you know you're gonna be doing some sort of secondary process to it, uh, that regardless of the cutting, you just wanna get a profile shape of it, you can run that at the fastest speeds, get a little bit rougher edge finish, and then do cleanup work afterward. Mm -hmm. Or you can do individual, like the individual holes here, you can select those at a better edge quality. And then you guys had done, looks like some additional piercing on through this. Just yeah, this was a sample uh, cutaway of pierces um, really close together. And these pierces are roughly uh, three quarters of an inch apart. And what you can see is uh, how cylindrical those pierces are. And then I ran that uh, water jet right through the center of them to really see are they going at weird angles, uh, how straight are they, and that ultra pierce with that slow eroding process just does a fantastic job. And then how close those pierces are, there was still no de delamination, even in this thick of material. So it's pretty neat to see. Yeah, actually, I think this is a really cool way to look at with water jets, part of the beauty of them is your tool is always sharp. Uh, because it's, it's new water, it's new abrasive throughout the entire cutting process. You don't have, compared to like a, a standard kind of tooling that might wear out over time of using it, you don't get any kind of loss of degradation of the material or the accuracy or the performance of the machine, where you can see the exact same result repeatable over and over and over again. So, yeah. Another kind of jump into it, another good material here for water jets uh, is G10. Uh, we did some, I guess you guys had done some cutting there. Um, I think we kind of highlighted a little bit earlier, but I understand you guys took a, a video of of this part being cut. Yeah, this was that one inch G G10 that we saw earlier, uh, and this was a gear that we cut out, 
and with so some external features and an internal um, hole for like a keyway. And okay. it just uh, it's fantastic. It takes about, if I remember, 13 seconds to uh, pierce through this hole. And where that number came from was doing a pierce um, on some excess piece of material around the corner and timing how long that pierce took to get through the material. And then I was able to take that number and uh, put it into the computer so that I know one inch material G10 takes about 13 to 14 seconds. Um, so you can change how long that pierce uh, is able to take depending on your material thickness. So that's the way we came up with how long it takes to pierce. Yeah, and that's actually a pretty valid point as well is even though all some materials may be labeled the same, some of them are processed slightly different. So I have a a slightly different hardness to them, uh, even though it may be another G10, you may find the way the software is optimized is you can fine tune that, that piercing process. So how long that pierce is for your specific sheet of material too. Yep. So if you find that yours is slightly harder than the last sheet you processed, you can adjust that, those pierce points. And I think here's some of those cutaways. And this is, I think jumping back to the, the one that was damaged in the initial kind of testing you guys did there. Yeah. And then here's a, a picture of a good uh, I guess the, the part that was using ultra pierce with mm -hmm. ways you get into that fine detail of cutting for your parts too. Yep. And then the, those two stacked up again, side by side, I, I think a good video or a picture to show kind of what is, what the benefits or kind of what the effects are of ultra pierce for, for any given process. And then lastly, a, another material, a, a great application we often hear about that people ask if, if water jet can be used for is phenolic, kind of those labor, uh, layered fabric sheets there. Um, and again, a, a great application often for water jets um, because of the, the minimal stresses applied in the cutting process by a water jet uh, within there, but you also avoid that potential blowout uh, or fraying edge of, of a part. Yeah, this was a little yeah. bit thinner material. I think this was about three eighths of an inch and you cut a little bracket, uh, custom electrical panel bracket out uh, with this. And then what you do notice if you don't use the ultra pierce is that uh, you get this air bubble uh, and it almost kind of gets camouflaged because you almost don't even see it because uh, the water um, comes out of the side of the material, maybe not out through the top. And so we should have a photo of what that looks like with the bubble. But yeah, there's the part, which oh, is part. okay. Kind of a yeah. cool complex geometry that you guys had programmed out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see it in the electrical industry. People are always looking to use phenolic for. And then I guess kind of a side view on that microscopic level of you can see those each individual layer to a to a part to it. Um, and I guess what you were just speaking about. Yeah. So this is the the challenge with the material like this, with all those multiple layers is if it's not set up properly or you're not using the right tooling, or if uh, you might have this, this tendency to have this blowout, kind of a separation of each of those layers, the kind of air bubble to it. Uh, kind of jumping to, I know, like I said, you had recently installed, uh, kind of added on Ultra Pierce to your machine, but I don't know if you kind of speak to what, what you guys had done there at the shop. <laughs> Actually, it was I was a little intimidated at first because I didn't know what I was going to be expecting. But uh, Ultra Pierce just came in a box and it had um, two solenoids that was already um, ready to be mounted to my machine. I already had tapped holes ready to go, and then all the electrical was already labeled. And I just plugged and play, um, moved an airline around, and the machine hardware was ready to go. Um, and then in the computer, I just had to enable a switch saying, hey, Ultra Pierce is on the machine and I want to cut. And I just hit go and it just works <laughs> just as it's supposed to. It was really simple. It took me about uh, two hours to uh, retrofit the machine and off we're going. But I do know I'm pretty mechanical and I like my hands on. I like knowing all about my machine. But if you need a technician to help you, uh, I'm sure Flow would help provide somebody to install it. Yeah, that's a good point is, is certainly we wanna, I know with our tech, technical department, always kind of supporting our customers, helping to grow their machines with, with their business to it. But mm -hmm. also yeah, part of that jumps into kind of just that, uh, is, is water, uh, Ultra Pierce available for all machines. And frankly, the way we design our machines and the way we package them is you can always upgrade your system. So it is, it's an option that's fully retrofitable, not only to our kind of 
current platform of machines, which you see here on the screen, but frankly, going back to our older generations of systems. So we want to make sure that kind of every customer has access to the latest innovations here at Flow and what we're doing. And that also extends to not only that with, with the machines, but the actual cutting heads themselves. So you kind of see a, a snapshot here of all of the different cutting heads we have available with all of our different machines. But the way we design our, our Pacer 4 cutting head is it'll mount to each one of those cutting heads and you can add it on down the road as well. But fundamentally, as you kind of get into to water jets, and I'm sure Jason could kind of add to this, but the important thing to look at is what, what makes a good water jet cut? And the way we, and I, I talk for the our flow team over here in, in Kent, Washington, but is every piece of that technology, including every component, every part, particulate of abrasive, does play an integral role in the performance of your water jet. Whereas we, we certainly want to make sure you're using the right combination of every aspect of the machine to help optimize your performance of the system. So providing your business with the most reliable, most productive, and the highest quality parts is frankly our goal here at Flow Every Day we get up and around is we want to make sure we're providing the highest quality water jets with the most capabilities. Um, we do have that extends all the way to the abrasive sand itself. And I know, Jason, you're kind of dealing with this day in and day out of running water jet, but this is a fundamental important part of water jet because this is really what's doing that, that, that cutting is the abrasive sand. And I'll, I'll, I know maybe elaborate a little bit what you guys are doing there with your water jet. Yeah, I use here primarily in the shop uh, 80 grit, and I find that it suits my needs uh, from cutting up to three and a half inch mild steel plate um, to some of these uh, composite materials. And I do know that uh, Flow has 200, which is a really fine, on all the way down to 60. But uh, 80 seems to be about the right balance for me uh, for speed and cost. Yeah, and I think most customers out there in the, the water jet world do 80 mesh, um, but there are definitely applications where you might want to adjust that. Like such as the glass industry will often use kind of 120 mesh abrasive, but it is important to kind of pair the machine appropriate to what you're doing with it. Um, the other big aspect of kind of the the day-to-day -day kind of use of the water jet is the software piece of it. Um, frankly, this is what you're doing using the machine most often with is kind of the, the cutting module and the software out of the, that machine. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you can elaborate how you guys use the your Ultra Pierce or the integration piece of that. Yeah, when uh, I first uh, got the machine, um, there's a little icon that's basically grayed out and that's for the Ultra Pierce. Um, but by plugging the Ultra Pierce into the um, hardware on the actual cutting head, um, and going into the computer and enabling it, um, that icon um, came available to me. And once you select that icon, you're able to uh, change some of the parameters, like your dwell time on your uh, piercing, um, what uh, pierce profile would you like? Would you like to pierce all holes first? Would you like to uh, pierce then cut? It kind of walks you through uh, what you'd like to do. So it's pretty simple and straightforward if you know the uh, flow cut software. Yeah, yeah, it's a key component of that, of kind of being able to that, that tie in for, so you don't have to necessarily become a water jet expert. From no. <laughs> but the yeah. machine do the rest of the hard work in the background. Yep. Um, it, here's a, a good visual for the, the audience there to kind of, uh, a key aspect of the water jet uh, is your mixing tube itself. Um, although it may seem like a simple item, just a carbide mixing tube, it's a key aspect of the, the performance of your machine. Um, so you want to make sure that you're optimizing the machine uh, in terms of the cutting speeds, per, uh, precise aspects of the water jet, but also the life of those components. Uh, this is a, a snapshot of that Delta series generation for mixing tubes, which provide the highest quality, but also at a, the most lowest price point for a water jet. Uh, the Delta series mixing tube, it does create that optimized mixture of abrasive sand and your high pressure water. The, the goal of that is to, to simply reduce the friction on the inside of that mixing tube, which ultimately provides, again, the lowest friction we could generate is ideal to provide the most coherent jet stream of water while optimizing your speed of your cutting and ultimately extending the longevity of those components. Um, along those lines, though, we do offer our what's called Flow Care Complete. It's a, it's a full preventative maintenance program that's available to or available to all Flow customers. Uh, I know, Jason, you're currently 
kind of this program with you with your water jet. Um, the goal of this program is to partner with our customers uh, to help kind of alleviate any concerns or helping them maximize the uptime of their water jet. Uh, so this is our promise to our customers to help in the day to day kind of as they're running their machines, as they're maintaining where our technicians will come out and help service those machines, do inspection of those systems to really let our customers focus on maximizing that uptime. Let us kind of potentially deal with the quote unquote headache of a water jet while you just simply kind of run the machine as, as much as possible and let you make as much money as possible with the water jet. Um, another big aspect of that partnership with our customers is the, the access to resources here at Flow. Uh, we want to make sure we're having the, the most amount of personnel and support between our customer service, technical service group, applications support, technical field service engineers, where as a Flow customer, you have access to our entire team here, including the guys here at our customer technology center. Um, but as, as you kind of dwell into going back to, I think, where we started out a little bit of, of why consider a water jet or especially if you're doing some complex materials, again, the, the, the beauty of water jets is the ver uh, versatility to be able to cut virtually any material at any shape within there. So you don't ever have to be limited to being able to process materials or kind of process it in your shop or do the cutting with it. You can have the most complex materials to the simplest materials can be cut on the exact same water jet. I know maybe I kind of pass this back off to you, Steve, there, but uh, I know we certainly would love to answer any questions anybody has there in the audience. Absolutely. Thank you guys very much, Jason and Adam. Great job. And thank you all who have been listening for sending in all your questions. We have a lot here. Uh, we have uh, a good chunk of time. We're going to try to get through as many of them as possible. Um, so let me just jump right in. The first group of questions, we have a ton of questions about materials and thickness and limitations, et cetera. But before we go there, it looks like there's another group of questions around the um, the, the the operation and the use of Ultra Pierce as it relates to what you guys both spoke about, the consumables. So when you use Ultra Pierce and you're talking about things like the different grit of abrasive and the different cutting heads, is the use of Ultra Pierce going to impact the wear and tear on the mixing tubes? Is it going to impact the amount of abrasive I need? And how is it going to impact the overall cost of running my system? In other words, is it is it worth it? Is it going to cost a lot more money? I think that's the gist of the question. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, maybe I'm sure Jason can uh, provide his feedback on something like that. The way I look at it, uh, the, the value of, of Ultra Pierce for a lot of customers is avoiding damaging material. So having to scrap any additional material that you might otherwise in that cutting process, if it doesn't do it exactly perfectly. Uh, there are certain things, certainly your consumables like the abrasive usage, water usage, additional wear and tear to the pump that you might see if you don't have Ultra Pierce. Um, meaning, quite frankly, is if you have to do a really long lead in lead out on a cutting process or a profile, that's additional cutting that you might not otherwise have to do if you had a technology like Ultra Pierce. Great, and, and a similar very technical question related to that. Um, if you find during the process of using Ultra Pierce that you need to switch out the, uh, the your abrasive, 80 maybe isn't working right for everybody. How do you go about flushing the lines and switching the abrasive without wasting too much time, too much energy, too much abrasive? What's the best way to do that? Is that something that you can answer now maybe, uh, Jason, or would you rather take that one uh, off the line? It's a little complicated, but. Well, uh, just go ahead, Adam, you can, you can answer that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and and uh, I'm actually, like I said, sitting here at our applications lab. I know that they're doing that kind of day in and day out of swapping out kind of that abrasive they use for every given customer's application and their kind of needs. Um, but you, you can't easily change that. Uh, at the main abrasive hopper, which typically is a 900 pound abrasive hopper, you can change out that abrasive and put new in there. Um, but also quite frankly, you could always have a spare a spare hopper, like something like our, our 100 pound hopper that you can plumb directly to the mini hopper and avoid having to clear out any additional lines. Um, and we do have a full applications teams kind of based around North America 
that if, uh, if there's any customers that kind of want to walk through what that looks like, we, I'm sure be able to get one of our guys on site to kind of help, help pair the right abrasive for your application too. Great, great, thank you. So um, Jason, this might be a good one for you. You were talking a little bit about the plug and play nature of setting up Ultra Pierce for you. Uh, a few questions. Can you talk a little bit about you know the utility requirements? Um, it sounds like you didn't need a technician to install it because you have so much experience, but um, what are the big considerations that you have to think about when you're gonna start working with Ultra Pierce? Um, actually, the system pretty much uh, worked as it should, but what I did notice is because of the Venturi nozzle that attaches to the side of the machine, uh, uses compressed air to pull that garnet through, that uh, my compressor was just running a little bit more than usual because it's just constantly, it's basically an open, open air source. So keep that in consideration that you need a, a good, reliable um, air compressor, which most people do if they have a water jet already. Um, so that just keep that in mind. But that was the only thing that really stood out to me. Great, and it sounds like if someone, if a, a customer or a potential customer were interested, we could have a conversation with them about what their specific uh, system specs are and what their application uses are and have that conversation uh, to make sure that the expectations are indeed what we are, um, are, are met as they should be. Sure. Great. Yeah, and I know I just kind of add maybe a little bit more there, Steve, as well. I know with the, the Ultra Pierce kit, it does provide a full manual walking you through that installation process, but also those utility requirements as well. Terrific. So I'm going to change the subject over to materials. Um, a few questions. Can we talk a little bit about um, thickness restrictions, uh, limitations in that respect on what you can cut, materials that are not good for ultra pierce, maybe materials that are particularly suited to it. We went through quite a bit of those, but what are yeah. some exceptions and what are some of the restrictions that you might have to keep in mind? Uh, and I'll, maybe I'll kind of field this here, but uh, yeah. frankly, there's really not any restrictions for that. Um, there are definitely good applications for using ultra pierce, uh, as well as there are definitely materials where you don't need ultra pierce. Uh, generally speaking, as you get into like your harder materials, like your metals, uh, those kind of materials, you wouldn't necessarily need to use ultra pierce for. Um, but the materials that have the tendency to be brittle or laminate materials, those would be kind of key applications that would require this kind of a, a cutting head setup. Um, as far as specific thicknesses or limitations, uh, there, isn't any, there isn't any kind of effect of that either. Uh, quite frankly, the thicker though it is, the, the more beneficial ultra pierce becomes. Uh, so as you have more and more layers of a material, the otherwise a higher tendency you would have to potentially delaminate if you weren't using ultra pairs. Great, and a couple of follow-ups to that. Um, one is that, um, do we have any uh, specific applications? I have a question from a, uh, someone in the audience about uh, number eight material. Any practical applications about that? Uh, Number eight, you said? Yes. Uh, I'm not familiar with that exact material there, but uh, I don't know. Jason, have you guys done any cutting? I have, I have no, <laughs> no, I have no way to help out with that material. Number okay. eight. I'll tell you what, if the person who submitted that question wants to uh, give us a little more information, if we can't get it in the next few minutes, uh, yeah. we'll follow yeah. up after the fact there's there's plenty more where that came from well, and, and uh, maybe i'll kind of speak to a little bit for the audience is uh at our technology center uh customer technology center here in kent washington i know they they do have a full applications lab where individuals customers can always process that here where they can send in material to the team and they'll actually cut out those parts and then send them back to verify cutting results so those are always available if some somebody wants to have okay. any specific cutting requirement Gotcha, and and uh, I think that's a great point that we can, there was a question about, can I get a sample test cut? And the answer is absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I know, I, I know our team here, there's about a half dozen guys, is that's what they do day in and day out, and they're always looking for kind of challenging uh, parts to be cut, so. And I will add, if you would like a sample test cut, again, put your name and contact information into the chat field or send an email to one of our uh, 
one of the folks on the flow team if you have one if not you can also go straight to the flow um, the flow website and click a button that says uh, get a sample cut fill in your information there and we will be more than happy to do that for you um, so the next set of questions here is about what I would call uh, operation so maybe this is a good one about um, what are best practices for maximizing our uptime um, preventative maintenance to take care of the uh, to take care of the system of course and we talked about the consumables it sounds like we answered some of this already but I think maximizing uptime is probably the yeah. um, what's kind of what what's available I guess is I don't know speak to exactly what the question was but I frankly a big part of being a flow customer is that support uh, where we want to make sure that we're between our training programs here at our facilities as well as online resources as well as quite frankly the our, our flow care program is I know that as a designer and a manufacturer of equipment we want to make sure each customer is maximizing that uptime of the machine um, the the more a customer is able to use machines the better off it helps them out as well as frankly that's what we're in the business of um, where we want to make sure that if a, if a machine is down unexpectedly that becomes a very significant cost for a lot of businesses where we want to make sure that on the day-to-day -day side your your machines always available and at any point in given any given point of running the system great great okay so two more uh, two more groups of questions the first is around cost um, Adam can you talk a little bit about um, what it costs to get Ultra Pierce and are there any special uh, additional components that it requires it sounded like it was a pretty easy plug and play from how Jason described it but if I don't own Ultra Pierce right now what do I got to do to get it up and running and how much yeah. Um, you can always contact our customer service group to be able to order anything like the Ultra Pierce or frankly any of the items on a machine. Um, I don't I don't know the exact cost, but it's a fairly minor item to a machine, quite frankly. Um, I think it's closer to about that $1,200 for the system. Um, the way we've designed our machines is for the most part to be fully retrofitable and plug and play where you don't need to kind of tear apart your machine and redesign it. We want to make sure you can add on that feature. And the same thing applies for virtually any item we kind of upgrade to our machines. Uh, you have access to as a flow customer for the longevity of your system. Um, well, and I'd like to add to that, if if you do get a job that your water jet needs to cut carbon fiber, I mean, you can just order the Ultra Pierce and go with it. So if that job does come available or around, you're, you know what you need now to accomplish that goal and you don't have to waste material on trying to figure it out. Flow's got it figured out for you. So <laughs> that's nice to know. Great, great, great advice. So the last set of questions um, is about uh, any offers or specials we have going on in the market. And if you guys don't mind, I'll take this one, but feel free to chime in if I forget anything. Um, at the moment, uh, the first offer we have in the market is if you're looking to buy a new system, um, we encourage you to talk to your sales rep about what that includes. The offer is if you get a, a new water jet system, of course, including a pump, the uh, depending on the configuration you choose, we are offering a free upgrade to the next highest performing pump at no cost to qualified buyers. So obviously this depends on what configuration you choose and what system you're interested in, but this is a very high value offer and can result in a system that you have that ultimately provides better ROI. So please check with your, uh, your sales rep uh, for that, your sales representative for that, and if you need more information right away, please send us a note. Um, the second is our system trade-in program. Some of you may already be aware of this. If you have a working water jet system right now made by any manufacturer, including Flow, as long as it's operating and you're looking to replace it, we will evaluate it with you and give you a credit toward your purchase of a new flow system. Whether it's from us or anyone else, call us right away and we will review the specs with you. We'll put together an estimate based on the value of that used system and credit that toward your purchase. It's a really great offer and we've had a lot of folks interested because the value of their old systems is still there 
and we can help you get into a, a bigger, badder, faster, better machine. And finally, um, although it hasn't been announced publicly, we are offering uh, a special financing deal on the purchase of a new flow system that gives qualified buyers a 90-day no-pay grace period on, on your monthly financing. So if you're ready to buy and you're financing your system, this is a great way to preserve cash flow for the first few months and also obviously minimize the expense of a large capital expenditure during an environment that's challenging economically to, uh, to say the least. So apply for the loan. The qualification of that loan is uh, certainly outside our control. It's our financing partners, but the 90 day no pay is a good period of breathing room for you to uh, get things up and running before the monthly operating costs hit you. And we've had a lot of traction on this offer as well. So buy a system, get a, get a pump upgrade, trade in an old system for a credit for a new one, or get a great deal on financing, all available right now. Um, call us at your convenience, we'll be happy to work with you. Now, that is all I have for today. We're at four minutes before the hour. If uh, you would like to sign up for our next webinar, please be uh, on the lookout. It's at the end of August and it will be all about choosing the right pump. Um, we will be sending out a thank you note along with the link to this recorded presentation as promised. And if you have submitted questions and we didn't have a chance to get to them, we will have uh, a sales representative reaching out to you uh, as soon as possible. We'd like to thank you again for attending. Feel free to visit us anytime. And we look forward to seeing you at our next, uh, our, our next webinar. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for everybody behind the scenes and have a great day.